Uh, I just want to uh, point out something because my Twitter is going crazy. It's not our Lindo Gukle Kulu uh, that's joining us. He's a youth activist. He's not the Lindo that everybody knows. Uh, but I want to start off with Michael. Um, I just want to get a sense from you firstly what you think about this uh, migration labor policy that's now been released and also um, put out for public comments by the minister. Do you think uh, this is going to solve the problem that we are face facing with many saying that there are just not enough South Africans employed in this country and uh, migrants are the ones taking up the jobs? No, absolutely not. I, I think it's just a sop to try and cure something uh, which is in fact the government's fault in the first place. If you have a look at it, foreign labor in this country makes up maybe four, maybe five percent. Uh, we had almost 50 percent unemployment. And in fact, the foreign labor that makes up the four or five percent are people who have got uh, jobs and in fact, in fact, have got the rights to find jobs. Our real problems are that we've got backward looking labor laws. We've got backward looking regulations. We've got people, we've got a porous border. They should actually try and close the borders and uh, put in people who actually have the rights to come in. Uh, the other problem, of course, is that we don't have enough inspectors uh, through the Department of Employment and Labor. So people aren't, in fact, checking up who is employed and who isn't employed. And most of the people that we're really complaining about are those who don't have work permits. So, no, this is absolute nonsense because... Look, look what happened with the apartheid government. They brought in job reservation, um, hoping also to be able to cure some sort of unemployment. But the reality is foreign nationals are not responsible for our sky high unemployment. Let's say you get rid of every single foreigner in the country. So you'll free up maybe 3% of the jobs. How does that cure our 50% unemployment? And those 3% might have skills that we need. So every skilled person that comes in with a foreign permit will probably employ four or five other South Africans. So, no, this is absolute nonsense, and it's something that the government can't somehow tackle. They're looking backwards. They're not looking forwards. They're looking inwards. They're not looking outwards. And the government itself should be looking at the real problems. Mm. Our government is economically illiterate. They're not understanding that what you need to do in the marketplace is you need to bring in skills. You need to deregulate the employment relationship completely. And you need to free up small businesses so that they can create more employment. It doesn't help to start locking people out. That doesn't help at all. Uh, the, the reality is that there are many opportunities for people to have skills. And we're desperate to find people with skills. You just need to open a newspaper every day and you see all the jobs being advertised. Mm. So how's this going to help? It's the minister trying his luck to look for a quick cure when it isn't a cure and to say, I'm doing something when he isn't doing anything at all. And anyway, you can bring in as many laws as you want. If you don't have inspectors, you're not, you can do nothing about it. Mm. I want to bring in Ntlantla Lux now because we've seen Operation Dudula. We've seen a lot of criticism around Operation Dudula. You've gone out in areas where you feel as though uh, you have undocumented foreign nationals taking up jobs, taking up spaces, taking away jobs from South Africans. Um, I'm not sure if that soundbite is ready, but let me ask you before uh, and then, okay, actually, let's listen to it. The Minister of Employment and Labor, Tulis Nglesi, has said that he does not agree with Operation Dudula, and while everybody has a right to protest, it should be done peacefully. Let's listen to that and we'll get your response after that. I just want to urge South Africans not to engage in, no matter what their feeling is, in relation to these issues. They have the right to protest, but not to engage in illegal activities and even violence. So we can't condone what they are doing and getting into the areas and forcing their way through. It's, it's not acceptable. But remember that the JPS cluster is handling this particular matter uh, because once it becomes the way it is, it doesn't become just a labor issue. 
it goes beyond that. So they are dealing with this particular matter. So, Ntlantla, you're hearing the minister saying they don't agree with this, they're dealing with the matter, but your stance is very clear. You don't agree with what's happening in the country at the moment. You're tackling certain areas. What is your response to all of this and this migration labor policy that's now being uh, put out for public comment? Look, I think uh, let's, let's first address what uh, Minister, minister uh, Tulas is saying there. Um, it's, it's very naive of him to say that South Africans must just sit back, don't engage in these issues. He himself is undermining the constitution. The laws of this country say South Africans can perform a citizen's arrest as an example. How do I then make sure that I become an active citizen and, and make sure that I, I uphold the laws of the country and make sure that everyone else around me also does the same thing if I'm instructed by a minister to just sit like a couch potato and do nothing for my country? Mm. So whether it comes from the president or the minister, that command will not be realized by our people in South Africa. Our people in South Africa must stand up and become active citizens. We must fight for the future and today of this country. Our kids are not going to, to be sitting there and blaming the minister in 20 years' time when the country is in total disaster. They're going to ask, Dad, what did you do? We must have answers for our own children. So in, at the, in the same breath, I agree and disagree with Michael a little bit. You know when our government uh, makes an effort to do something, even when we do see that this is a desperate effort to look good, it's not a genuine effort, we need to appreciate it. We need to appreciate it because we live, we've now become normalized to the fact that they just walk around and do nothing most of the time. But in this case, they've done something. They've, they've changed the labor law and, and they've made it seem, or maybe it is in fact a, a, a beneficial to South Africans. What's important that Michael said is, is the implementation of that because there's something that happens when theory meets real life. Heidi. So when theorem is real life, we can all plan the theory in the world. But if we don't have people with enough confidence, vigor, and conviction to make that theory become real life, then we're just talking about um, pen on paper. So we need a government that's intentional, that's deliberate, that's there to work with our people and ensure that South Africans come first in South Africa. That's all we're doing as, as, as put South Africa first to Dola, so to Parliament. You can name all these groups. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to unite with everyone who can see this vision. But when people come from you know sitting on the high horses and saying that these people what they're doing is illegal here's a simple question to government or anyone in government or in law enforcement if tutola is illegal why hasn't anyone been arrested to date what is illegal in tutola why are the law why is the law enforcement continuing to come to every operation with us and smiling at us if it's illegal why are you smiling at something illegal why aren't you arresting us if it's illegal mm. instead you are leaving what's really illegal out in the streets 14-year-old girls turning to prostitutes, drug dealing happening, police vans collecting bribes from, from drug dealers' houses every day. I can take you now with these cameras. We can sit at some spots. It's not, we don't even need to wait for the sun to set. Now, it's happening now as I speak. Mm. Now, no. that is illegal, not when South Africans stand up for South Africa. Yeah, I, I, I hear you, uh, and you make a very good point. And, Lindor, maybe we can bring you in here. Um, over 65% of the youth are unemployed in this country. They are sitting at home. A lot of them have even given up looking for jobs. And you have an employment and labor minister standing up and saying, everybody has a right to employment, whether you're South African or not. But the cry here, and as you're hearing Ntlantla saying, and as you're hearing Michael saying, what is government doing for our people, for our young people who are supposedly supposed to be the future of this country. What is your response to this? Uh, firstly, I don't think that the minister is correct uh, to say that everyone has a right to employment, whether uh, you are illegally or illegally. Because the legislation is clear to say that you have citizens of the country who must be prioritized with job opportunities. But you also have people who are Islam seekers, who are in the country legally, who have a right to employment. But uh, the third category also have people who are sourced in, into the country with scarce skills. They are brought to the country uh, because they have skills that do not exist in the country. But they are brought with one mandate, of which is skills transfer. They must transfer skills to South African, and they are given a certain period. After they've transferred skills, they can leave the country, and uh, the jobs opportunities can then be given uh, to South Africans. But where I strongly disagree uh, uh, with Operation Tutula 
is that it seems like <coughs> Operation Tutula uh, is not a, a responsible, in, a, in my view, is not responsible enough because when you hear uh, leaders of Operation Tutula speak and when you hear the songs that they sing and uh, their followers sing, it, it kind of sends two different messages. When you hear uh, the leaders of Operation Tutula speak, they speak uh, within the legal framework. But when you hear uh, uh, um, uh, 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 their followers sing and make comments during this protest, they say things like these foreigners they must all leave, these foreigners must go back with the crocodile that they came in. And that cannot be correct. Why it cannot be correct is because it, 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 we as a country, we have a responsibility in Africa to, we say our foreign police promotes African interest. So we have a responsibility as a country to provide leadership in SADC, we have a responsibility to provide leadership in Africa. And the problems that we have are these people, are, most of foreigners are in this country because of instability, corruption, misgovernment, and dictatorship in their own countries. Mm. And we have policies in South Africa that so to speak and solve those problems. But South Africa has a leftist responsibility of providing leadership. They sit in African Union in SADC with these leaders. They drink coffee. They do not call them out. And their problems becomes our problems. But secondly, where I also okay, uh, Linda, disagree... Sorry, I, we, I, I want us to all get an opportunity to speak. So I will come back with, to you and I want to also get a response from Intlantla about the, the part where they disagree with Operation Dudula. Michael, I quickly want to ask Ask you, and um, if I can just ask you to try and keep your answers brief, the, the the migration policy speaks about setting quotas, and if companies and business owners and so forth don't agree to this, they can be fined. But I think the big question here that everybody's asking is why were companies allowed to uh, employ uh, foreign nationals without proper documentation, without being fair in the employment conditions that they give to these foreign nationals uh, in the first place? Why did it have to reach crime? crisis level before government actually does this. Do you think that the quotas um, are actually going to work and whether or not businesses will adhere to this because they clearly aren't adhering to, adhering to it now? Well, absolutely not. And I'll tell you why. And the minister is actually trying to pull the wool over the eyes of South Africa. This law is in fact trying to slap quotas on the number of documented foreign nationals. In other words, people who actually have employment certificates, not the people who with other two are talking about, not the people who come in and find jobs because they're desperate and they're going to get, they're going to earn less than what normal South Africans minimum wage requires. What the minister is trying to do is to cut down on the documented people who have work permits. And so he's actually lying to the country because the people who don't have work permits is always going to be there. They're going to come through a porous border and they're going to find work because employers are saying, well, we can get them at half the price. And I think all three of us are exactly in the same boat. We need more employment in this country. Let's actually tackle the problem. Let's not start tackling something completely ancillary to the problem. This is just xenophobic that the minister is trying to do. What he needs to do is he needs to free up small businesses so that they can create employment. All of us live in South Africa. All of us want our families to find jobs. We're all affected by it. Never mind 65% of the youth don't have jobs. It's much higher. When you look at the unemployed youth who don't have education, it's almost 80%. When you look at the previously disadvantaged areas, you're looking at most areas at 80% unemployment. It's completely unsustainable. Yeah. And to say that we're going to take 3% of people who marched in and try and send them home, that's not a cure at all. We need proper action from a government that is useless. They're sitting on their hands. The government needs to completely change. They need to get rid of the minister, and we need to actually change our economic system so that we can put more people in jobs. Why is it the rest of Southern Africa don't have the same pandemic we have? The real pandemic is unemployment in this country, yeah. and we're not doing anything to cure it. For the last 10 years, every single quarter, the unemployment has got worse and worse, and each time we see government saying, well, we're going to bring in a new law. It doesn't help. You can't have a seatbelt law if you've got no traffic ops.
Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and Tlantla, I want to ask you whether or not you agree or disagree. You probably disagree with many saying that Operation Dudula might be somewhat xenophobic because, uh, as Lindor rightfully mentions, you have certain people within Operation Dudula saying foreigners must leave. They, they should not be here. South Africans should be employed. Um, even though I get what you're trying to say, you're trying to say that equal opportunity should be given to South Africans. But... Uh, do you think your Operation Dudula is actually working? Do you think yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's, it's getting the message across to, the right message across to government? Because I hear what Michael's saying, you know, we should uh, get rid of the minister, and then a new minister comes and it's the same problem again. Yeah. We're not actually dealing yeah. with the problem. Yeah. Let me actually correct you there. Okay. We are not saying we want equal opportunity with foreigners, be it legal or illegal. South Africans must come best in South Africa. Mm. The opportunities must, we must be first preference for every opportunity in this country. We can't give what we don't have. We can't give health care when we don't have health care. We can't give electricity. We've got a crisis of electricity in this country. We can't give that all the high-tech buildings are now enjoying free electricity from whether legal or illegal foreigners. We don't have electricity in Soweto, in Alexandra, Kukuletu, Sesheho, and so forth. We, we don't. Mm. Now, where I strongly disagree with my brother here, you know, right now, I've got, I've got the opportunity to crush him, but I'm not going to do that. Please I'm, don't. Instead, we're going to work together <laughs> and ensure that the differences we put aside and where we, we, we understand each other, we move forward. But he, he can speak, Benek. That's why he can say some of the songs he is unhappy with. But I can say, please, just don't even sing, because I'm not testing your singing ability now. Tell me what song. There's no single song. That suggests people must go back on crocodiles. And it's very naive of us to come to such a big platform, not to us, to come to such a big platform and start saying that, uh, you know, Tutula people are saying they must go back on crocodiles. How do you vet if someone is Tutula or not? When you speak to me, it's verified that you are speaking to someone from uh, Tutula's uh, Soweto Parliament or put South Africa best. But when you're speaking to someone on the pavement, that person could be sent by politi political parties or, or people who are not in, in favor of Tutula to come and wear Tutula t-shirt and speak as they please. So we need to be careful, my brother, of, of who, where we're getting this information from and where we are bringing it on such big platforms. Mm. But we are not here for the differences. Sure. I'm saying we appreciate when people don't see, the same, the, see things the same way with us. We are open-minded enough to say, Michael, what you're saying, I need to learn from it, and this is how we'll move tomorrow. To say, Lindo, what you're saying makes sense, this is how we move tomorrow. But we are not here on a bashing contest. We are here for, prog for progression of this country, and, and at the center of everything must be unity. Sure. Lindo, uh, your uh, response to uh, this, because I, I, I do think it's important as a young person that engages with government. I do know that the ANC Youth League did write a letter to the president to say there's a crisis. Young people do not have opportunities. It's such a sad picture to see how, uh, in my view, that there is just zero effort to try and solve this problem. So... Uh, Perhaps your response to, to, to Just this? Just quickly, mm. uh, on the minister's side, I think the approach that the minister is taking is wrong because the problem is not the, the vacuum, the policy vacuum. We have policies that are, they are existing. If you look what he has introduced and what has been existing is the same thing. Uh, but what is lacking is enforcement. Is mm. the enforcement of those policies. But as far as Operation Tutula is concerned, I'm a bit worried that it seems to me that it, 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 it mobilizes hatred against foreign nationals. Because as my brother speaks here, he's not even speaking. He's saying, he's putting them on the same uh, a blanket, those who are documented and those who are not documented. And that cannot be correct. Secondly, the, 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 the issue here is that their approach is very dangerous because we, our, our stability in the, as a country is very sensitive. We've just seen with the July unrest. It can yes, be but Lindo, sorry, I don't, mean, I don't mean to interject, but uh, we, we've completely run out of time, but I just have to make this point. Yes. What Operation Dudula is doing is it's standing up because it feels as though government is not doing anything. So even if you disagree with that stance, what they're doing is not necessarily illegal. It's rather, and maybe in Tlantla can speak on Operation Dudula, mm. but, you know, from how we see things... But what, 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 what I'm seeing, Mina, is Operation Dudula going to the poor people who from outside countries who are victims in their countries instead of going to government to enforce laws. Yeah, but government because doesn't listen. Government uh, is uh, not uh, listening. But Operation Tutula has not been into, uh, I have not been, I have not seen Operation Tutula being active 
as it active to go to foreigners, being active to go to uh, home affairs, being active to go to international relations, to go to, uh, 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 to defense. Because the problem is that you have laws in the country that are not being enforced. So what e Operation Tutula is, is doing is equal to criminality. So what are you because saying? Okay, the, so what, the, are you saying? The, 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 what Operation Tutula is doing is inciting violence. And we cannot How? afford How are the they violence. How violence, Lindo? If you sing and say, where's Wango Banuguti Kware Kware Liangwe? You are saying you must not beg the foreigner, whether that foreigner is legal or illegal in the country. And if you are creating a condition of confrontation between foreigners and, and locals, you are creating a recipe for disaster. And as a country, we cannot afford that. We've just come from the July unrest that left the, our country bent first. Secondly, the stability of the country yeah. and the security cluster of the country is not strong enough to face what they are they, they, starting. And they themselves, can, they are taking unarmed people to uh, very dangerous uh, foreigners who in some countries escape war. And these people are unarmed. And when they go there, they go inciting violence because they were even mm. military colors. I thought and be nice. in, I, I, an African, I, I, yeah. in an African way of doing things, I thought be nice. the symbols... The symbols and what you see, it, it, it's very important. Mm. And th what they see and how they dress, yeah. they dress in a manner that promotes violence. Okay, Linda, we've run out of time. I'm so sorry. Yeah. That's your final, uh, sure. your response to this, please, briefly. I'm, I'm worried, need to get I'm my worried that as a young person, mm. you, are, you are part of government. And you are here sitting saying that we don't engage government. The biggest march to Human Rights Commission was by us. I was leading that march. We sit, we're sitting in a meeting with the Premier's office. Or mm. Maybe you were disconnected in government as you are disconnected on the ground. Mm. You don't know what's going on. Mm. So maybe... They, no, but you can no, 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 it's my turn to speak. No, no, no. We you can't can just... Okay, guys, guys. No, if you're, you're in government, you're no, behaving no. this way. This is why uh, the country no, no, is no, no, in touch. But, but I'll, yeah, be, I'll be making a mistake. Okay, let's not shout. Let's not shout. Let's not shout. No, but I kept quiet to give him a chance to speak. No, but clearly his mission is for me not to speak. No, but you can just make the point. What I'm saying is that... No, you... No, 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 no. What I'm saying is that we are inviting, we are inciting violence. Okay, guys. You are Sorry, like guys. You already said that. You must be arrested. You already said that. Okay, yes. and Santa Lindo. Okay, you can't You already said that. You can't respond. This is a result of... We're going to switch off your mics because this is my show. So this please, is a result of you guys, you guys can have your debates after but, this. But I need I'm to... not, I voted for current government, okay, but okay. I'm not government. Lindo, you will have I this discussion. I agree that we have the influx migration in the country. Yeah. But what they are doing is inside of, inside metal So why are okay. we being okay, arrested? That they cannot we're going to switch your mics off. Arrested. We're going to switch your mics off. We cannot. We, we need, we need why, to... Why aren't we being arrested if it's okay. violent? Uh, it's okay. because okay, nobody has opened the case okay. against you. I'll okay, I, actually, person. I've run out of time I'll completely. I'll be the better person, I'll keep going. Uh, yeah, we've closed your mics because we just can't. Um, could we maybe just get one response from uh, Michael? 30 seconds, your response to this, please. Thank you. You can hear what's going on, and this is caused by unemployment. The government has not looked at the real causes of unemployment. We're all in this together. All three of us are in this together. We're in the same boat. We've, we've got a leak. The boat's going down. doesn't matter what you believe or what you think. It's going down, and we need to look at that real cause, and that is the harsh labor regulatory authority, the harsh labor legislation. We need to free up small businesses to create more jobs so that everyone gets a job. This is ridiculous. If there are 50% of us who can't find jobs, it's going to create arguments like you've just heard. And it's sad because we've got wonderful people. We've got productive people. We've got a great South Africa. We've got everything going for us. We've just got a government that's absolutely useless and should be thrown into the dustbin of history. Uh, thank, thank you, you so much. much for listening thank you. We, we do appreciate your time. That was Ntlanta Lux, a member of Soweto Parliament, Lindo Gukle Kululu, a youth activist, and Michael Bagram, who's a Labour lawyer. Uh, thank you all three so much for your time.